Hey, so I was building my own uh, home theater PC. I think I'm on my fifth Myth TV box. And I thought, hey, why not make a how-to video on how to do it all yourself? So I just got a uh, Silverstone uh, case here for my birthday. And it's a huge case. I'm going to have a review for it on my site. But uh, it has tons of room for a full ATX board and quite a bit of other good stuff. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to gut my old desktop here. Uh, I have a really old kind of case with it, but I have all new uh, uh, internals there. Anti power supply, it's a Core 2 Duo, and uh, a really nice uh, gigabyte board. So the only problem is here, my video card actually uh, blew out on me. Well, I tried baking it to fix it, and it still didn't work. So uh, I'm going to break this up in a couple different parts, but the first part is going to be uh, just putting the hardware together, what you want, and uh, how to actually put it all together. Um, so let's start with uh, the f major thing you want is you need to figure out what you're going to be doing. Are you going to be doing just standard definition? Are you going to be doing HD? Uh, is this also going to be like a router or a file server? Or what is your new box going to be? Because uh, that depends a lot on what you actually need in this machine. And so for me, I already have a NAS set up. I already have my uh, router somewhere else. So all I need it to do is play my media. I need it to record live television, watch live television, and uh, play music and pictures. So for me, uh, the basic features are I need a couple different HD tuners, and I already have those from old uh, machines that I've set up. I have a uh, HD Home Run, which is two HD tuners that actually sit on the network, and I have an HD PVR, which will plug into this USB and get inputs directly uh, from my cable box. So besides that, uh, I just needed all the hardware here. And because I'm running Linux, I do need to be a little more careful on what video card I'm going to be using. Um, just because with HD and video cards in Linux, it's important. So I started off with, uh, I mean, the basics of the board. It's just a Gigabyte board that took a uh, Core 2 Duo. Uh, this is actually going to be the most powerful machine uh, I've ever built for a home theater. And the Core 2 Duo is clocked, I think, at like 3, or it's like 2.6 gigahertz, uh, which is a good... Uh, good clock speed for HD. You don't want anything below, I'd say, 2 gigahertz. It just gets really taxing on HD. If you're recording and watching HD at the same time, it really taxes that processor. The video card, because I'm going to be getting a uh, NVIDIA 9500 GT, uh, that has great uh, Linux support. So a lot of the decoding of the or deinterlacing of and decoding of the HD content is going to be put off onto the video card and not on the processor, which is going to be great. And so the only other thing you want is, for me, this machine is going to be in my living room, and so I want it to be as quiet as possible. So make sure that your power supply, uh, CPU fan, case fans, and also your uh, video card fans are all super quiet. And for me, uh, the 9500 does make a fanless version, and I'm not going to be doing too much gaming, so that'll be fine for me with what I want. And uh, I just need to make sure that this fan up here is quiet enough, and the I know the power supply fan is pretty quiet, so otherwise I'll just I can buy another Core 2 Duo fan. So uh, let's go ahead and take it all apart, and I'll put it all into the new case and show you guys how that goes. All right, that's it. We're all done, and we're ready to install. No, I went a little fast for you. Uh, let's go back through that again. Okay, so here's our case. I already have all my components installed in it, and I just wanted to point out a couple things that you really want to make sure on these media center machines. Uh, the biggest thing is airflow, and for me, because this machine is going to be in my living room, I need it to be quiet. And so I opted for this uh, MSI, um, makes the NVIDIA 9500 GT, and the awesome thing about it is it's completely fanless. There's just this huge heat sink on the back. Make sure, make sure, make sure that you have clearance. I came really close there, uh, but it definitely is is okay for what I need. Uh, the only other things that I needed on here was I got the two fans here hooked up. Both of them are exhaust, and the one fan on the CPU, it really just blows up. It'd be better if it could blow out the side, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and leave it there and see how well that works. And then I have the one fan that's exhaust here with an intake on this side. Uh, the vent on the side of this case doesn't really matter to me. It's going to suck in some air in through here, but that's about it. 
So the major things you definitely want to keep cool, video card, CPU, and your hard drives. And so with this case, hopefully, all the vent is going to go back out these two sides. So it's going to draw in air from all this side. And I'm hoping that this front, because I left the plates in the front here, I don't actually have a CD or DVD drive to put in here. So both those plates are still in there. And I'm hoping that it pulls, it actually has vents on the bottom of the case along this side. I'm hoping as much as possible that it pulls in air from here, goes over the hard drives, and then out all the way out to the other side going across the video card. If that doesn't work, I'm going to work on actually taping over some of these whole, the vents down here so it forces the air to draw in through this side. So that's really all we got for the, the computer build. Uh, it's pretty standard for any normal build. I zip tied quite a few of these together so that they're as much out of the way as possible. And it's a really good idea if you uh, stay away from uh, parallel or the uh, ribbon cables, the IDE cables here, and instead go with all serial ATA just because it stays out of the way and it's a lot smaller and doesn't hinder any airflow. So uh, really that's all we got so far for the hardware. I mean, if you've built any computer, you can probably build one of these. Some of the cases are small. You'll want to make sure you measure a lot of stuff out and make sure you have the measurements required and it holds enough hard drives and everything that you want. My hard drives in here will be plenty for me. It has uh, 300 and almost 400 gigs of storage, which is fine for me for the amount of stuff. I have a NAS that if I want to keep stuff longer, I can transcode it and put it on there. Uh, so if you, do, if you don't have something like that, make sure this will hold enough hard drives, physical hard drives, and also that the board will support if you want like a two and a half terabyte drive, you need to make sure the board, you know, the chipset on it can support that. So otherwise, uh, this system's all ready to go. And I'm just going to go ahead and install uh, Mythbuntu on it because it's a pretty easy way to get Myth TV on any machine. So uh, check out the second video for that. I'll walk you through setting up all the tuners and guide information. And then we'll be watching TV in no time. All right, so here we are, final step of the hardware install. And that's actually installing all the hardware into where it's going to be and hopefully you measured everything out carefully with uh, your rack or whatever your home entertainment equipment sitting on or in so that you have plenty of space for everything especially with mine because it's such a big case uh, I need to make sure that it all fits so here's uh, the case right in front I got everything here I have a nice big opening there ready to go it's it's a very tight fit but it still works got my cable box uh, HDPVR over there receiver, PS3, and the TV there. Uh, before actually doing the software install, I highly recommend actually when you're doing the install to have the machine plugged into the TV, especially with Myth TV. If you're doing it on a monitor somewhere else and you're not quite at the exact location or you don't have all the hardware, for mine I have the cable box that needs to be here as well as the HD PVR and the uh, HD home run. And if I install it at work or install it at my desk, I don't have the same network set up, so I need to make sure that it's installed exactly as it's going to be used. It just makes everything easier. So I highly recommend installing everything where it's going to be. Not great if you have other people that want to use the TV or only one TV, but uh, it works the best. So once you clear all the cats out of the way, uh, you'll be ready to go. So final step or next step, I guess, is uh, doing software. Let's start there.